You know, every so often I'll read an article about the latest uh, kind of warrior woman trope in television or in movies or in books, and they're always opining that this is a new thing, that, you know, that Wonder Woman was a new thing, or that uh, Xena Warrior Princess is a new thing, or Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a new thing. But the old English poem Judith shows us that this is not new at all. The idea of the beautiful kick-butt warrior woman who turns out to be the ideal of womanhood is who we see in the Old English Judith. Now, uh, Judith, if you're Catholic or Eastern Orthodox, you'll recognize as one of the books of the Bible. If you're Protestant, it isn't in the Protestant Bible. In, and so what's happened in the Old English Judith is a poet has taken this uh, story and has turned it into a poem about Judith, this woman who uh, who uh, defends her people by essentially using her beauty and her guile to seduce Holofernes, uh, get him alone, get him drunk, and then cut his head off. And in this, I think we see two really interesting things. One thing we see is that this is definitely a Christian poet writing about this. This is a Christian take on it. So, for example, if we look uh, at line uh, 83 of the poem, we see God of creation, this is, this is Judith's prayer. God of creation, spirit of comfort, son of the almighty, I want to beseech you for the mercy on me in my time of need, glorious trinity. There we have uh, Elaine Treherne's, um translation. God, the Holy Spirit, son. An explicit reference to the trinity that would be extremely unlikely uh, for uh, a woman in the Old Testament to be making sense, of course. Uh, you know, the Messiah has not yet come uh, at this time. So this is very much a uh, Christian take uh, on the story. And what we see here throughout Judith is we see two things really emphasized about Judith. One thing is the idea that she is virtuous. You know, her virtue is, is uh, really emphasized here, even I think more than it is uh, in the, in the uh, biblical account. And also how beautiful she is. Every time they talk about how curly her hair is, curly hair seems to have been something that was pretty important uh, to the Anglo-Saxons in their sense of beauty. And we're told how she, every element of her is beautiful. And so we're first told that she's beautiful and that she is virtuous. And so she is a kind of ideal of womanhood, but to be this true ideal of womanhood, in addition to those things, she also has to be smart and also has to be courageous and defend her people as a warrior, which is not a role that we typically think of medieval women as being in, yet sometimes they were called upon to be to ha have this kind of role. So, reading further down, let's look at the death scene where she kills Holofernes. And pay attention to how many times he emphasizes how virtuous she is, how evil he is, and how beautiful she is. Um, She's, this is starting on line 99, or 98. She seized the heathen man securely by his hair, pulled him shamefully toward her with her hands, and skillfully placed the wicked and loathsome man so that she could most easily manage the miserable one well. Then the woman with braided locks struck the enemy, the hostile one, with the shining sword so that she cut through half of his neck, such that he lay unconscious, drunk, and wounded. He was not dead yet, not entirely lifeless. The courageous woman struck the heathen hound energetically another time, so that his head rolled uh, forward on the floor. The foul body lay behind, dead. The spirit departed elsewhere under the deep earth and was oppressed there and fettered in torment forever after, cruelly round with serpents, bound with punishments, cruelly imprisoned hellfire after his departure. So, how of fairness is depicted not just as a drunk, but as evil and an enemy of the people. And she, first of all, uses her beauty and her guile. So she's beautiful and she's smart to get in there. And then here we see not just this emphasis on, on how evil she he is, but how beautiful she is. And also that she is not able really to cut his head off in one blow. You know, she cuts it off in two blow, a point that's emphasized, the two blows, a point that's emphasized by the poet. So we see here, she's not necessarily imbued with supernatural powers, but ra uh, supernatural strength, but rather she uses what she has as a woman to serve God and to serve her people. And so we see here, one of the women, one of the archetypes that really predates 
all of the beautiful kick butt warrior women who you might see in popular culture today.